Every so often I come across a product that blows my mind, be it in terms of price or performance or lack thereof. Well, this is one of those cases where I saw the price of the item and I just couldn't help myself. I was a little bit nostalgic for my old iPod Shuffle, you know, clip on the back, you turn it on and it just plays music at random without any of this tracking BS that modern smartphones have or the bloated apps or the shitty battery life. It just played music and that's all it did. Well, came across this thing on AliExpress the other day for a whopping 78 cents. I honestly didn't even expect product to show up. I mean, look at it. It looks somewhat decent, but this is all you get with it. There's no included headphones, there's no included documentation, no USB cable for charging the damn thing even. I'd be surprised if there's a battery. All that came with it is the player. And I guess a nice little plastic bag. Well, let's open it up and hopefully it'll turn on, right? Another thing worth noting is that for your 78 cents, you are not getting any memory whatsoever. You will need to provide your own micro SD card, which fortunately I have dozens of lying around. Hopefully this thing works though. As you can see, the front of it looks all right. There's a power switch and the headphone jack on the back. Ooh, wow, courageous. There's a clip and the charging port and micro USB port. The front is made of metal, which actually feels pretty solid. And there's a nice little clip on the back. Although I don't know how much that's gonna hold up to. It feels like pretty cheap plastic. Let's start by plugging this thing in and hopefully it will start charging. I mean, hopefully it doesn't burn down my house. It's mini USB, so that's a little bit strange. Um, one second. Technical difficulties. Um, I don't see any light on it. Is this thing actually charging? Okay, I'm gonna have to go check and see that this is charging and I'll get back to you in just a second. So I plugged it in and there's no light. That's not a good sign. It doesn't seem to be charging at all, but you know, I'm ready to give this thing the benefit of the doubt, so maybe it's fully charged right out of the box. Let's just turn it on and see if it'll play music. So let's unplug it, and I've got my little micro SD card here, and let's put that thing in. And I guess this is the moment of truth. Oh, well look at that, there is a light, so it's doing something. I'm going to plug in my speaker, and I've just downloaded some free music from the YouTube Content Creators Library. Three, two, one. Well, there's definitely sound. Whoa. Oh, that button feels awful. All right, let's just unplug that so we don't get any annoying music. The buttons feel like mashing potatoes. There's no feedback to them whatsoever. And this one actually over here is a little bit stuck. Um, let's pull it. Ah, the bottom one and the top one actually have a little bit of click to them, but the center, the right. Oh, that's terrible. You can, that, that noise is actually from the table I'm on, not from, oh man. Let's take a closer look at it here, shall we? So when it's playing, the light flashes like so. And when it's paused, the light goes steady like that. I'm just gonna plug some headphones in and give it a quick test with the headphones and just see how the audio quality is and talk to you about that. So with my headphones on, the first thing that I notice is that the volume does not go low enough for me. Uh, comfortably speaking, it's always too loud. There is no low volume level whatsoever. And when I have the volume at a quieter level, I notice that there's an odd 
ticking in the background. I'm not sure if it's a ticking or a hissing, but I'll try and record that on the computer so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Overall though, it's startling how good this thing actually sounds. For 78 cents, I am not disappointed whatsoever. In fact, I am amazed that this thing even plays music. Oh, man. And you know what? It doesn't sound bad. There's lots of bass. The treble is fairly clear. There's very little distortion, even at loud volumes. At higher volumes, the ticking sound isn't even there because it gets drowned out. I'm just a little bit mind blown that this thing even plays music, let alone actually sounds good. The other thing I've noticed, despite the number of times that I turn it on, is that it always does the same shuffle. There's no actual shuffle function to this thing, it just randomly organizes the song and then plays them in that random organization. It doesn't actually shuffle the files every time it plays. Alright, so I've got my little tool here and let's pull this thing apart and see what it's like on the inside. Oh wow, that was easy. Okay, so that is aside, and let's just go underneath here and oops, pop this thing out. This is one of those moments where I wish I had a little more knowledge about circuit boards, but at least I can give you a good idea of what it looks like. Uh, let's get nice and close up here. So, whoops, wrong way around. This is what the circuit board looks like. This is one of the most simplistic circuit boards I've ever seen. Little tiny battery, it just sits right there. There isn't even any tape holding it down, no glue, nothing. Little power switch, headphone port, charger port, and it doesn't even look like there's any sort of protection on the battery that I can see. If there is, well, that's really simple. Um, I'm assuming that this one here is the processor for the audio, and these other little chips are just power converters of some sort. How does this thing even charge it? Oh, man. There's no C1, there's C2, C3, B. Let's look at the other side now. So there's what the buttons look like. This is why the buttons are such trash. There's a little bit of spring to it, but in reality, there's not much feedback. I've never seen a circuit board so simple. I'm curious what you guys think about this. Uh, I'd like to see your comments because without any sort of protection on the battery, this thing could burn your house down if it's not really intelligent enough to know when to shut off charging the battery. I mean, yeah, it works, and it's 78 cents. I just... I don't know, it terrifies me just a little bit. Funny thing is, I plugged this thing in with my Kuisi, and it wasn't showing any charge whatsoever. So I'm wondering if the case is that this thing is quite literally disposable, like a one-time use MP3 player. You get your dollar's worth, your hour and a half of music and then it just shuts off and never turns back on. Well, I'm going to see if I can get this to charge off screen, so hopefully we can figure something out. Otherwise, otherwise, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to recommend buying one of these. So the only way I've been able to get the indication light to show up that it might be charging is to plug it into a computer directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing on and let it drain itself to zero and then plug it into my computer and see if that actually recharges it. So here goes nothing. So a bit of an update here. I did get it to charge, sort of. The only way it seems to be able to charge is through a computer and it cannot charge while playing. So, so if you're wondering what the horrific downside to a 78 cent MP3 player is, it's that it charges through a computer at an awfully slow speed. So it's basically unusable. It's like a disposable mp3 player, one-time use. <sighs> well, that's too bad, because otherwise I would have used this thing in my car fairly regularly just to play random music when I didn't want to use data or Spotify or whatever. Anyways, I hope this video was interesting. Thanks for watching.